No master plan. If tomorrow, by some miracle, everyone in the world let go of the belief in authority, the vast majority of theft, assault, and murder in society would immediately cease. All wars would end, all robbery in the name of taxation would stop, all oppression carried out in the name of law would cease. The people as a whole, including the perpetuators, victims, and spectators of oppression, would no longer view such acts of aggression as legitimate. But there would be another, less immediate change as well. The belief in authority is in essence a psychological cage. It trains people to believe that they do not need to judge what is right and what is wrong, that they do not need to take it upon themselves to fix society, that all that is required of them is that they play by the rules and do as they are told while looking to leaders and lawmakers to handle the problems of society. In short, the belief in authority trains people to never grow up and always to view the world as children view it, as an incomprehensibly complicated place that is and always will be someone else's responsibility. Whatever the problem, poverty, crime, disease, economic or environmental trouble, the indoctrinated status are always on the lookout for some new leader to elect who, who will promise to fix things. In one way, a world of authoritarian functions exactly the way a kindergarten classroom does. If anything goes wrong, if anything outside the predictable, pre-planned, centrally controlled agenda occurs, the children will call the teacher to fix everything. The entire authoritarian environment of a classroom teaches the children that they are never in charge. It is never up to them to decide what to do. In fact, they are strongly discouraged from ever thinking or acting on their own. After all, if they were allowed to think and make their own decision, the first decision most of them would make would be to walk out of the classroom. Likewise, adult authoritarians are constantly told that one should not take the law into his own hands. The people are trained to call the authorities whenever there is a conflict or a problem and then meekly do whatever the government enforcers tell them to do. If there's any dispute between people, the people are told that they should always run to the masters, whether by calling the police or by going to authoritarian courts to settle disagreements. When discussing societal challenges, the well-trained subjects of the state talk in such terms as, they should pass a law, or they should make a government program. They view their lives as part of a giant centralized master plan, so it logically flows that if they want their lives improved, the solution is to petition the planners to change the plan. This view is so ingrained in the masses that many people literally cannot comprehend the idea of individuals living their own lives without being part of anyone else's master plan. This is demonstrated by the common response authoritarians have to the idea of a society without rulers. Almost without exception, a statist who ponders a stateless society will begin to ask questions of how things will work without a ruling class. He does not ask this simply because he's curious about the roads, defense, trade, dispute, resolution, and other things, and how other things might function without government. He asks this because he has always been trained to view human existence inside the framework of some centralized, forcibly imposed master plan, and is literally incapable of thinking outside that paradigm. And so he will speak of how th he will ask how things will work under anarchy, and will refer to it as a system, imagining it as a new type of master plan to be inflicted upon the masses, when of course it is the exact opposite, a, la a complete lack of a centralized, forcibly imposed plan. But an overall plan for humanity is all the status has ever considered, and often it is all that can be comprehended. The idea that no one will be in charge, and there will be no one making the rules for everyone else, that no one will be planning or managing mankind as a whole, and that no one will be telling the status what to do, is simply something most authoritarians have never even imagined. The concept is so unfamiliar that they do not even know how to process it, so they desperately try to fit the idea of anarchy, a stateless society, into the mold of a master plan. 
Such contradictory contradictory thinking is also reinforced by those who wear the label of anarcho-communist. The term implies that there would be no ruling class and that society would be organized into a collectivist system. Of course, if some group claims the right to forcibly impose such a system on everyone else, that is authoritarianism, and the so-called anarcho part of the term would not apply. Another option is that those calling themselves anarcho-communists are merely hoping that, in the absence of a ruling class, every single individual on the planet will freely choose to participate in communes or collectives, which of course would not happen. As a final possibility, perhaps the anarcho-communists would for themselves choose to be part of a commune, but would allow others to choose different arrangements. In the end, the term anarcho-communists makes little sense and is actually a symptom of authoritarianism. Even when advocating a stateless society, some people automatically imagine that there must be some overarching system or plan, some grand scheme, some form of societal management which must be imposed upon mankind as a whole. The truth is, with or without the myth of authority, no one can guarantee justice or prosperity, or predict everything that might occur, or know every problem that might arise, or how to solve them all. The difference is that those who believe in authority continue to pretend, despite constant overwhelming evidence to the contrary, that an authoritarian system of control can guarantee safety, security, prosperity, fairness, and justice. Meanwhile, those who have given up the most dangerous superstition, no longer pretend that it is possible to control everything and everyone via any system. Bizarrely, despite the nearly incomprehensible degree of economic disaster, human suffering, and mass oppression which the belief in government has repeatedly caused, proponents of authoritarianism still insist that those who oppose statism must be able to describe in minute detail exactly how everything in society would work in the absence of government so that nothing bad could possibly happen. As if they cannot, as of course no one can, the statist then proclaims that as proof anarchy will never work. Rather than being a, a rational conclusion, such an idea is the symptom of deep-seated mental dependency and fear of the unknown. Status want to promise that some all-knowing, all-powerful entity will take care of them and protect them from the possible misfortune and from all the bad people in the world. The fact that politicians have been making such promises forever and have never once actually fulfilled such a promise, because the promise, the promise is patently ridiculous, does not stop the status from wanting to hear the promise. No matter how many times authoritarian solutions fail horrendously, most people still think that some other government plan is the only answer. What they want is a guarantee that some all-powerful entity outside of themselves will make sure that their lives are comfortable and safe. They do not seem to care or even notice that such guarantees never come true, and that anyone claiming the power to make such a guarantee is either an amazingly bold liar or a lunatic. Nonetheless, because anarchists and voluntarists would never make the absurd promise that without government, nothing bad will ever happen, most statists remain terrified of the idea of a stateless society. Author's personal note. I have found that whenever the topic of a stateless society comes up in my discussions with statists, almost Almost without fail, they begin asking questions in the passive voice. How will this get done? How will that be handled? They speak as if even when it comes to their own lives, they are little more than spectators waiting to see what will happen. This is because for many of our formative years, especially while in school, they were little more than spectators. The scripts of their lives were written by others, their destiny was determined and decided by authority, not by themselves. So, in an effort to get them to escape that mindset, when they ask me something like, Under anarchy, how will this be dealt with? I respond, how would you deal with it? Then they ask, what would be done about this potential problem? I ask, what would you do about it? 
And they usually come up with ideas off the top of their heads that are better than any authoritarian solution. The problem is not that they are incapable of being in charge of, the, of themselves, their futures, and in fact their future of the world. The problem is that it has never occurred to them that they already are in charge of themselves, their futures, and the future of the world. One who understands that authority is a myth does not have any obligation to explain how every aspect of a free society would work any more than someone who says that Santa Claus is not real has some obligation to explain how Christmas will work without him. However, statists often insist as a condition of even considering the possibility of a stateless society that someone tell them how every aspect of everyone's life will work without government. Of course, no one knows, with or without the myth of government, what will happen, and clinging to a provably false, self-contradictory myth, which itself has led to large-scale murder, extortion, and oppression, because someone failed to describe in detail a perfect world without the myth, is absurd. People can make suggestions or predictions about how different aspects of a free society would work without the involvement of authority, and many scholarly treatises do exactly that. But once someone truly understands the insanity inherent in any belief in authority, he will never go back to accepting the myth, regardless of what he thinks might happen without it, any more than an adult would go back to believing in Santa Claus because he doesn't know whether Christmas will work without him.